Do you want to improve productivity? Then Little's Law in Queuing Theory is for you. Queuing Theory is the analysis of queues, or in other words, it is a study of lines. The aim of this study is to find ways to make those long lines in front of a bank or an ATM go faster. Little's Law is an equation showing that the average number of customers in a queuing system is equal to their average rate multiplied by the average amount of time they spend in the system. In other words, number of items in the queue is equal to arrival rate into average time spent in the queue. This law applies only to queuing systems. These are systems in which work has to enter and leave and work never ends while inside. Recall standing in a queue. The point is never to queue, but you enter the queue, spend time going through the process of queuing and then finally move to the front to do whatever you were waiting for in the line. Another example is a production or assembly line. Sure, the work done is faster and more efficient, but still products wait in a queue to enter production unit to get work done on them and then leave for the next step. The work being done while in the queue does not matter. The law itself is named after John Little, an MIT professor who first mathematically proved the law in 1961. The law existed beforehand, but until Little, there wasn't a set mathematical definition of it or proof for its validity. Little defined the law while doing operations research on traffic control signals, hence the basis of it as a way to analyze queuing systems. Little's law is incredibly simple. L is equal to A into W. In this formula, L stands for the number of items inside the queuing system. This is also known as WIP, that is, the items that are a work in progress. A represents the arrival rate and departure rate of items in and out of the business system. This is also known as throughput or the amount of an item passing into and or out of a system and is sometimes represented as lambda. Arrival rate is usually a fraction. This is because you are measuring the rate at which items enter or depart from the system rather than the number of items or the time between new arrivals. Therefore, A is always expressed as a fraction, that is, A is equal to one item by the unit of time. For example, if a new item enters your queue every 30 minutes, then your arrival rate is not 30 but instead 1 by 30. And lastly, W is the average amount of time an item spends in your queuing system. This is also known as lead time and can also be any unit of time. The confusing part of this element is that the unit needs to be the same as the one you used for A, that is, if you measured the arrival rates in weeks, then W will also be measured in weeks. So the law becomes, number of items in the system is equal to the rate items enter and leave the system into the average amount of time items spend in the system. The formula can also be changed to make any of the three elements the focus. The three possible variations are therefore, L is equal to A into W, A is equal to L by W, W is equal to L by A. Little's law needs to be applied to a stable system in order to work. Unit of measurement should be consistent. This means that you measure the arrival rate in days, then the amount of time items spent in the system should also be measured in days. Average arrival rate should be equal to average departure rate. This could be a little more difficult to keep consistent, but the easiest way to deal with this is to alter arrival rate to match the departure rate. This simply means that do not start any new task until the current one is completed. All work enters is completed and leaves the system. As an extension of having identical arrival and departure rates, your system needs to be one in which work actually leaves it. Having items hang around for an indeterminate amount of time makes both your arrival rates and WIP time completely inaccurate, and so Little's law cannot be applied. WIP amount and time is consistent. If the WIP time is consistent, Chances are that you're trying to apply Little's Law too much at once and need to break your original queue into smaller subsystems. For example, rather than examining the entire output of a manufacturing facility at once, narrow your scope to a single type of assembly line or the cycle of a particular product. This way, you're not getting inaccurate results due to the different life cycles of the various products made in the facility. 
The law provides a quick and easy way to perform rough calculations, track performance over time, and even make predictions for changes you are planning. Want to know whether you have the resources to deal with an increase in clients? Use your desired growth rate as your arrival rate, then multiply that by the average amount of time it takes you to deal with the ticket. And you'll then be able to see how many clients will need to be serviced in your support system at any given time. That was all for this video. Thank you for watching. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel Explified. Check out our channel for more interesting content.